Hey guys, Justice Curry here. I have a very important guest, Pete McCarthy. Hey! How you doing? <laughs> Now, Pete, oh. we are now sitting at Muskecon in Muskegon, Michigan. Where on the, the map of Michigan is Muskegon? Oh. Well, you have to you turn have to, it the other way. Yeah. Yeah. We're right about here. Right okay. about here. Right you know, here. I've often I've often thought, how much more fun would it be if we lived in a state that was shaped like a butt? Yes. You know what I mean? And then I'd say, so, hey, bend over. Right. And hey, where do you live? Point. I'm 45 minutes west of the hole. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so, would like that. Yeah. Justice Curry here. I am at MuskeCon. It's wonderful. Uh, Comic Con is the third year. Uh, it's 2019 right now. I hired the top of the line videographer, uh, Vergita. How are you doing? I'm fabulous. Wonderful. How are you? I am good. This is actually Vernetta, um, one of Travis's good friends, and then became one of my good friends. And we had a lot of fun together. I still yeah. remember the first time I met you, but we'll tell that story behind the scenes yeah. later. Um, so I'm going to hand the camera to Vernetta here, and we're just going to kind of take a tour around Muskegon. Uh, Muskegon, Michigan is about right here. Am I doing it right? Yeah, right here on the map of Michigan. So, centralized uh, western Michigan. So, let's go around the first. We'll start at the beginning to make it easier. We have a celebrity. Um, this is Stephen Bashotti. Steven's known from many of the, uh, the comic book characters. Uh, he's developed Supergirl, Deadpool. Um, I, I can't believe they got him to be part of the ski con, but it was an honor to talk with him. He sells some of his art here. I'll put a link in my description. If you see anything that you like, one of my personal favorites is Mount Rushmore. The evil Mount Rushmore. It doesn't zoom in other than this thing. So you got Cobra Commander, um, Transformer, Skeletor, and then Shredder. Definitely contact Steven if you want one of these prints. Uh, they're affordable and he does ship. So we'll leave him alone because he hates me and we're kind of on a kind of on the outs right now with our relationship. But that's all right. That's all right. He'll come around like he always does. We're always on the outs. Here we are. <laughs> That's <laughs> why he's not talking to you, right? <laughs> That's right. It's like a conducting business. So, super affordable. Moving right along, you got Travis. Now, Travis, I've shown his booths in many of my other YouTube videos. I mean, almost every show I go to, he's the man. He's got some wonderful stuff, a lot of modern, mix of all kinds of things from DC, the Marvel, the G.I. Joe, Star Wars, um, one of the hot sellers that he's been um, sitting on and selling recently are these Mythic Legions. The Mythic Legions were a Kickstarter, um, super articulate figures, the detail is amazing, and as you can see, you know, they're 55 bucks. So they're, they're not for children collectors, these are dog collectors. Um, and they keep bugging me to get into this, but I'm like, that is a rodeo I do not want to get involved with because it is it's endless. And, it's, and I love them, I love them, but I don't have room too. So we're coming right along here. We have a, uh, a random homeless person that snuck into the con here. Um, <laughs> that's all right. Security, security, can we get her out of here, please? Um, Travis is conducting some business over here. He loves when I interrupt him um, and, and just spoil some of his deals. He's listening to me right now. You can hear me in the back of his mind. This is truly unprofessional of me, so I'm going to keep moving right along. One of my favorite, favorite booths that, uh, that's in Michigan a lot is Tashi Station, run by Kyle and uh, Jason Beanstraw. Now they have a, a real cool mix of some modern, vintage, everything in between. Um, heavy Star Wars, because they're super passionate Star Wars collectors. Um, they're good guys to deal with. They're not going to overcharge you. Um, G.I. Joe's, I mean, even when I first got into the collecting community, Kyle was, he's probably, what, 75 years old? Yeah, it's 2019, so he's about 75. Um, 78. So he's kind of my Obi-Wan that's, that's took me, this young Padawan, on the journey of collecting and taught me 
the ropes per se. And I surpassed him as the master now, um, but that's all right. I don't, I don't have a, yeah, that's, that's correct. <laughs> that's, that's right. Um, one of my favorite things, I just gotta show you one thing over here. This is Jason, his uh, heterosexual life mate, Jason. Um, I mean, where are you gonna find a recon sled, G.I. Joe, sealed for 55 bucks? I, I gotta buy this. I don't know why I haven't bought this yet. Really, really high end uh, GI Joes, Transformers, and then Air Raiders. Like this is a unique line. You don't see Air Raiders a lot. I love, love coming to shows like this and seeing toy lines that uh, that aren't. I mean, they're not super collectible like GI Joes or He-Man, but uh, the collectors like them nonetheless. All right, continuing right along. <laughs> Uh, Defenders of Eden. I've talked to Matt Rodriguez a few times. Matt is he's an artist, he's a creator, he's a wonderful human being. He puts on Tulip, uh, Com Tulip, City, Tulip City Comic Con near south of Grand Rapids or west of Grand Rapids. Uh, here's one of his comic books that just came out. Defenders of Eden. Rodriguez. Beautiful art. I read it the other day. Uh, how can people, if someone's interested in this, how can they contact you? Well, they can either go to our website or they can go to Tardy's in Grand Rapids or Out of the Box in Zealand and they're for sale. Okay. Awesome. And then we also have issue two coming out next month. Okay. So yeah. We're going to drop the second issue soon. Perfect. And then did you get to interview um, Pete? Yeah. Oh, no. Pete, the creator of Mosquitoes? Yeah, Pete, oh. the creator of Mosquitoes. Oh, Oh my gosh, hey! Hey everyone! Pete McCarthy here, year three, Muskie Con. What? Thanks for coming. Hey, that's Justice Curry! I bye! Hey, whoa. I see you on the internet! You saw my YouTube videos? Yes! That's awesome, Pete. I love you so much. Oh, Alright, wow. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> My videographer just threw up in her mouth a little bit. Um, wonderful art. One more thing I wanted to just touch base on. Motu Joe, Retro Rags. Uh, Retro Rags Limited, I've talked about his, his wonderful website. These are some of the, the exclusive designs that you're only going to find on Retro Rags. A lot of He-Man stuff. Uh, G.I. Joe, like a Mickey Mouse Cobra Commander. Mosquito. Or, or, you know, Breakfast Club. All the, the breakfast monster cereals. Isn't that freaking sweet? I know, you gotta get it. That's, that's perfect. Really, really cool art um, featured on there. Then you see other creators that have, you know, they bring their passion for all sorts of things. You're not just finding toys here. Have you been recording? It's not recording anymore. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> my God, I didn't touch anything. No, no, no. Because now this should yeah. crack the camera. I mean, I think my wife already bought one of these for our daughter. Really, really cool stuff. I love coming to shows and not just seeing toys or comic books all the time, but people's expression of their art. And it's, it's truly this is amazing. Tasha, the run the booth. Oh, okay. Tasha, this is Justice. Hi. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. We got a wonderful booth here. Yeah. All right. We're gonna continue right along. Different artists. One that I wanted to touch base with, I interviewed Pete McCarthy behind here, the backdrop, but the artist himself, this is Jeremy DeWitt. I'm standing in front of royalty right now. How are you, sir? You are lucky to be in my presence, my child. <laughs> games, other vintage, one of the cool things that I wanted to stop at this booth for and show off was his Slimer gumball machine. He was telling me previously that he had picked this up on Craigslist, so someone's kind of custom. Can you show me what it does, sir? By all means. By the way, nice to meet you. Halloween Jack. Hey, Halloween Jack. Halloween Jack, Jack Halloween Jacks, tricks and treats. Awesome, awesome. All right, check this out. First of all, we got oh lighting. Oh my gosh, yes. Yes. Then we, when you want to fire up your proton pack. <laughs> nice, nice. There's more? Wait. Yes. <laughs> oh we'll my. We ain't done. We're not done? We ain't done. Wait, there's more. Limited time offer. No way. Halloween Jack. That is so cool, man. 
Does it dispense the bubble gum? <laughs> does it actually dispense the bubble gum? Yes, it does. 50 cents. It does dispense them two at a time. The coin slot does not work, obviously, because of all the wiring that had to go in that had to get chucked. Yeah, yep. But if you have 50 cents, you can buy two Ecto balls. Oh, that's neat. Oh, no, look at We got step dry it up. All, all right. right, sir. Okay, buddy, I want you to hold your hand just like, actually, hold both of your hands just like that because these come out at high speed. Uh oh. Here we go. Oh, there nice. We go. Yum, yum. Enjoy your ecto ball. Enjoy your slime. And now, I was at Travis's booth a little while ago, and I was reaching up for the Skeletor, My and man. you grabbed it right out from under me. Yes, I did. So, you're going to flip it, you're going to collect, save it. Mine. Can I see it? Can we show the people your Skeletor? <laughs> yeah, all right. See. Oh, my gosh, yes. In my, in my house, I have a shelf dedicated to 80s cartoon yes. villains. Yes. I love them. I grew up with them. Seven, I cannot nine, wait to bust seven, this guy out. Two, are you going to open it? Can you open it right now? Yeah, sure. Just rip it. Rip it. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm having a heart attack. I'm a mint on card collector, so this is hurting me. I'm dying inside a little bit. Oh, you are the worst. <laughs> I am. I'm Toy Story 2 all the way. Yeah, like, don't you remember how evil upset guy. Prospect was? Never oh, yeah. being open. Never feeling loved. No. Do you, do you think I want this guy coming to life and attacking me in my sleep? You know what? You no. have a fair point. No. You kind of convinced me. I think I'm going to go home and rip open all my figures now. How does it feel? You feel good opening that? Oh, it always feels good. It always feels good. Always. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. All right. I do, I do have another bin you're going to want to see. I will definitely. And one of the things that I love is he has just these random bins with Ninja Turtles or Transformers or random figures he labeled. Oh, check out. Oh, yes. I will definitely check that out. You know it. Oh my goodness! In the random figures. Now that's that's part of the hunt is looking for things that. Uh, that's always been my favorite. Oh, favorite. I, I love it going under tables and going, what's this? What's that? And and just finding these treasures. It's the best. So there's the Skeletor slowly undressing. It's uh, it's truly. Uh, an honor. I hate twisty ties. I know. We'll come back later when you have it fully out there. Oh no! Oh, never mind. Can, can I just hold it for a second? I've never actually, I don't open my toys. So just touching it is going to be... Once again, you, know, you, you, you are just the worst type of person. <laughs> yes, he's, he's half correct. First oh, man. he's popping the head off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see it. He's changing it out to the better version. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and the staff for the finishing touches. I don't know. You kind of just have to force it in there. Just, just ram that staff in there, right, Renata? <laughs> you do that so well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll be Skeletor in the remake. Yeah, nice, I'll be, I'll be nice. in the remake. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. Oh, God. Yeah. You're killing me. Oh, look at that. All right, give it back. Run, run. Let's go. I, I love will it, have this table. Yeah. <laughs> As he leaves tall building. Well, thanks for Halloween, Jack, for talking Thank you. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You're never right. My old buddy's Eric. Um, he's, he's always, he's got the same skeleton. He's, yeah, I guess he does have the same skeleton. Can we open yours? Just like Halloween Jack open this. Come on. Halloween Jack, here. We got another one for you to open right here. That's the I know he will. He's oh, by the way. Oh, thanks, man. I got a free gift. Desert Storm trading cards. There's no bubble gum, unfortunately, because I would eat the bubble gum right now. But I used to collect these suckers and think they were going to be worth all sorts of money. Look at these things. Oh, opening up. Desert Storm 
trading cards. You know how valuable these things are? These things are on like Forbes top 10 list. Uh, they're better investments than gold. You realize that, don't you? So continue along. How's the show going, by the way? Very good. Very good? I see you got a lot of comics. What seems to be the best seller? Your toys, your comics, or the both? The games. The games. Okay. Well, awesome, awesome. You got a nice mix of games. Sweet. Oh, look at these. I don't know. These are the newfangled toys that the kids are playing with these days. You would know about that, right, Bernard? Absolutely not. Nah, okay. Continuing right along, um, other books and expressions of art. Michigan author Deanna Compton with her legendary Dynasty Descendants books. And a nice dragon holding a saber. I love it. And are you the author of these books? Oh, very cool. I love it. Okay, excellent, excellent, excellent. Michigan authors. Little bookmark right there. Cool. Alright, take care. We had an alien, the Kenner life size, not life size, 12 inch alien. Must have sold it. But you just find unique little things here. Coyote Ugly. Do you remember that movie? Yes. <laughs> I thought you were an extra in that no. movie, weren't you? Not so much. That was the ugly part. <laughs> now, this, if I undid the tape, it would unravel. This is the, what, 35 millimeter um, movie reel tape that they put in the projector at the movie theaters. Touchstone Disney. I'm surprised this sucker survived. That is that's kind of cool. That is weird. Isn't that weird that you see this thing? Yes. I love it. What's this one? Scary movie? Scary. It's by the um, There's cosplayers. There's a cosplay contest later. You gotta get the judge. It's gonna be fun. Um, we got Boba Fett's rocking. I mean, this guy assaulted me earlier. It's crazy. It's absolutely anarchy. Quick, you can survive with your life. Comics, books, autographs, one of the higher end tables. Um, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. I mean, you see stuff that I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, this belongs in a museum. But he's got it. Uh, Are you talking about the collection or the owner of the booth? Both. He does belong in a museum. His mind should be preserved for science. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful human being. Right, right. You set up at other shows all you set up all around the country or Yeah, around the country. That's great. You've been doing it for how many years? Ish? Well, I started at the south side of Chicago with Larry Charay who became the Chicago Comic Line and then uh, Wizard now in Chicago, but I was doing that in 73. Oh my god. Yep. So you've yeah. seen a lot of fads and trends oh, yeah. and all sorts of things. Yeah. The 70s, that is yeah. amazing. I would love yeah. to pick your brain someday. Oh. Just sit down. Oh, yeah. Yes. We would have a good time. <laughs> well, and what's becoming my favorite stuff now is the old Stan. I got it. But Stan Lee yeah. over the years signed oh. like 500 things for me. Oh. I was doing 120 a year yep. for the last five years. And then, of course, can't do that anymore. But yep. Yep. I sell a lot of those. I bet. Uh, I bet. I love these pickups. I mean, those are beautiful. They're World War II. Those are they're, they're all from the 40s. After World War II, Alberto Varga went to, uh, in 54, yep. he went to Playboy. So he did the Varga Girls and Playboy. Those don't sell. These are Esquire magazine That's not back in World War II. Yep. They were fully clothed. They were the teases, yeah, but they're wholesome and all American or whatever. Yep. And they yep. sell really well. Oh, I bet. The Playboys, you can't give them away. Yeah. yeah. Cool, thanks, brother. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Continuing our circuit, there's another smaller room that we probably won't visit. Um, some different art forms and whatnot. Where my passion typically lies in the toys. Now, this this brings back some incredible memories. I remember buying these. They had some scratch off games inside of them as well. The Nintendo Power Packs. Um, and this is a really cool booth. I mean, you got biker mice, biker mice from Mars merchandise, stickers. Uh, some unique G.I. Joe's, this is probably early 2000s, I'm guessing, when 
G.I. Joe was fluttering in the wind. Is this your boot, sir? Yes. Hello. Justice Curry. What's your name? Luke. Hey, Luke. Hey, nice to meet you. Thanks for letting me take a tour, even though I didn't ask. I'm just kind of blowing my... I was going to say, I think, I think he's like in that personal space. <laughs> it's my yeah. bubble. Yeah. What I, I really wanted to show people at home. Now, I've talked about the flag many times. Um, the flag, GI Joe collectors, they go through phases. When they, when they start off, they're like, I need a flag. But it's massive. It's seven and a half feet long. Um, and 90, this one's 95% complete. $650 for best offer. Um, that's a fair price because these suckers are going for like a grand to get complete. He has the rarest part, the fan deck rail. Uh, Voltron's making a huge comeback. Um, I actually sold him this uh, Voltron Lego set. And it's just a beautiful piece. All sorts of Marvel Legends, uh, Ninja Turtles, Legos. You never know what you're going to find. Just kind of a hodgepodge of well, French fries. I mean, everything that you're going to find at a toy show. Uh, Stranger Things, if you haven't watched Stranger Things yet, turn off YouTube, stop listening to me, go watch Stranger Things because it is freaking fantastic. You will absolutely love it. Did you like Stranger Things? No. What? Get away from me right now. I'm getting it. Stay, stay. <laughs> Um, I watched the first season of Stop. How is that possible? You're on American. I waited for something to happen that didn't. It, it, uh, it just like let me down. You know what? She didn't give it enough time. Avatar. Now, Avatar was an, a decent movie, but I like this, this machine to put G.I. Joe's in. Uh, it's really cool diorama set. I'm going to have to ask him how much he's selling this for later and uh, try to figure out a deal, a negotiation deal. Um, <laughs> moving over here. More randomness. Mask is making a comeback. I'm seeing people always ask me, you got mask, Justice? You got mask? Mask is really, really cool. They kind of transform halfway. Nice uh, nice scale toy lines and build the figures. Uh, random comic books and, and prints. Skeleton Warriors. I like that. Skeleton Warriors is pretty neat. Oh, he's even got the, uh, the horse in the background. Sergeant Savage. A lot of G.I. Joe collectors stick their, you know, nose in the air. Eh, hey, Sergeant Savage. This tank rocks. It is really, the scale of figures suck. The tank uh, of the machines. Sky Striker. These boxes, the fact that it exists anymore and wasn't thrown away is a rarity. The G.I. Joe collector is definitely one uh, to get their hands on it. Look at that. 100 bucks. That's a fair price. I have one of those. You have this? Why? <laughs> I think they're just saying I have it. <laughs> you really have it. What? The custom. Oh, the custom. What do you do? The kind of custom. Party. Yes. And I took it as a gift. I took it as a, I stole it from someone. You stole it? That's right. You're doing a, um, what are those things called? It's like a white elephant yeah, a white thing. Elephant yes, thing. at Travis yeah, House. It. Yes, and I took it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is so nice. So I just have it in my bedroom. No. This ticket number yeah. is 7972. That print that you said was his favorite. 7972. Yeah. Yeah. You have that same print? I actually gave it away as a gift to someone. Oh. It was in my house for like five years. Really? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. All right, you're back in your corner. Yes. You're back. <laughs> yes. Let's let's go over here. Here's Ben's. Oh my God. This is a very uh, famous filmmaker, international, um, all over the place. Guillermo. Guillermo. Security. <laughs> Guillermo's the director of Plastic Crack. You know I've been talking about Plastic Crack on Amazon day in and day out. I'll put an ad for Plastic Crack, and right now, boom. So I collect pretty much anything that reminds me of my childhood. It all really just started with my mother getting me my first uh, G.I. Joe whale in the box. I try to collect memories, I try to collect nostalgia, I try to collect all the things that made me happy when I was a, back in the day when I was a kid. And I think it does, it, you're kind of recreating your childhood.
think it's such a powerful connection to our past. I think everybody tries to search for their childhood. If, if you had a good one, then I had a great one. It's the nostalgia of like, it's a, this recreation of your youth and having the toys you had as a kid. I received the Ice Saber. I was ex very ecstatic to receive any G.I. Joes in general because my family didn't have a lot of money. About how they had it and what it meant to them, how their mom sold it at a garage sale. Because I remember going into the stores. I remember seeing them on the shelves. The, the racks were from the ground to almost the ceiling. Standing close, I would stand back and try to just see everything and go, wow. The aisles and all the rows of these great toys. Buy a figure and then on the back, you got all the faces of all the other new figures. And you're like, huh? My dad was trying to teach me the lesson of money. And I remember seeing commercials for it. I remember I watched the cartoon after school. Because Ghostbusters is my thing. And I was saying, I gotta have this. My dad says, no. It was like a mini Christmas. Every time seeing the Toys R Us logo or KB Toys, you walk in, you see all these cool toy lines, you see all these glossy packaging and this cool artwork that's just made to catch your eye. I can't tell you what times they would say yes, but you know, one toy or, or um, we're not getting anything though, just looking, just looking. I can remember the hell I put my parents through when we'd go to the toy store because I would not leave without something. But I knew exactly what to say. I knew exactly how to give the puppy dog eyes. And even once you get to the car, you're like, you're still trying to bargain with your parents. Like, come on, let's just go back and get one more. Come on, just one more. And then back then in the 70s or early 80s, it was okay for a kid to run down the street and go to the store by themselves. These days, not so much. I think I got my first pony when I was a year old. My grandfather got me Applejack. Uh, that was my first one. And it kind of just turned into this. <laughs> My collection now is so much bigger than what I had as a child. If you put a 10-year-old's mind cap on the 10-year-old's world, this bedroom, this room that we're in right now, is four times as big as it really is in our minds. But to them, it's a whole other world, right? So those memories at such early ages are way, I believe, way more powerful, and they stick in parts of our brains, the deep recesses of our brains, permanently. They don't ever go away. I think plastic crack is a perfect description. It truly is. Because once you get addicted, you've got to have your next fix. Where's the next big thing? And then when you get that big thing, you're like, yes, what's next? Oh, I'm a total addict. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a total addict. <laughs> I think there has been times where I'll pick a toy, and I'll be like, yes. <laughs> that rabbit hole is just, I keep going further and further down it. It's not the same type of addiction. It is an addiction, but it's not, I don't consider it hurting anybody. It's not taking away anything from my family. My bills are still being paid. I still have food in the refrigerator. It may be ramen, but yes, there's still food available. Have some fun, this, these are toys. Um, these are meant to be played with and enjoyed, and that's the whole point of something that's like this. It's not a serious thing. These are toys and meant to be fun. If you've had a pony right now in your bag, and you'd be like, hey, I've got this pony, I probably would still have to ask you what it is and for you to show it to me, because I, I can't not. <laughs> watching an ad and we're back from the ad but check it out plastic cracks season one available on amazon i'll have a link in my description how are you doing great great i love it here man i love it here have you found anything personal that you yeah well, what, what, what is this game okay who uh, people get you, you will have to pay for it <laughs> no. whoa back the barge you got it you got it sail barge. yes the sail barge that was a Kickstarter yes, initially. Crowdfunded. Crowdfunded, okay. And they just arrived. So right now it's uh, early 2019. So all my friends are posting pictures of these ginormous sail barges. Everybody but right here. You know, he's got one, he's got one, he's got one, he's got one. That little three-year-old over there has got a, a sail barge. Except for me. Except for me. But that's all right. Um, back 
Negotiations to try to film Russ's collection. He's got a freaking epic collection. There's a lot of red tape and lawyers involved right now. Homeless thing. Is that homeless? I've got to put my at the shelter there. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 um, Where's the snake eyes? We're snake eyes. Snake eyes. You're, I'm splicing in all sorts of fun snake eyes and prank, prank them. He luckily got out of the way when I was really getting awkward with people. He was tipped off, so I was you know, getting in people's personal bubble spaces and touching people or high-fiving and not letting go of hands. Oh, stealing stuff. Snake Eyes was a horrible person earlier today. And you guys, I'm going to edit it perfectly. You're going to see it. You're going to love it. But uh, yeah, we did a plastic crack panel. Unfortunately, we survived. Yes, we did survive. And he's always nervous about talking. But that guy. Because I'm behind that camera, not in front. I don't. I'm, this is not me. No, but his. It looks like you. It was him. His elegant speech and how he put together words. I am serious. I could never get to that level. I strive to get to your level. Right. No, I'm serious. I am no BS. I know I joke around a lot. You are a fantastic verbalist. Uh, I was going to make this for you to talk more. I, I didn't need to. Because if I started talking, you would have made me in dust and I would look like an idiot. No, so I, I, no I, yeah, that's all right. You had a slide. I had a slide. slide. Dedicated to Justice Curry. Yeah, that was, that that was me. Just and he had me shoving muscle men into my mouth, and that sounds horrible. Muscle men are a toy line, amongst other things. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, we're shoving muscle men, and then he ended up using it as the the cover of plastic crack and embarrassing me. And people were photoshopping it. You like? And I cried. Oh, okay. first time. Yeah. <laughs> there was only a, I only asked once. <laughs> he didn't think twice to start putting stuff in his mouth. Yeah, uh, you know. That's, Bernetta's looking at me and making some funny facial. Do you have something to say? No, I'm just saying it just sounds like you. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> sounds fair like enough. you. We think you're fooling, boy. I know. I know. <laughs> Continuing the tour as this person embarrasses me um, in front of my friends and family, you at home. Yeah, um, so excellent yeah, collection of video you? games. I love vintage yeah, video yeah. games. This is crazy nostalgic for me looking at the old Sega games I mean Double Dragon wow what is this system this is the all oh, the Sega Mega Drive right yes love it love it love it love it um, an adaptation of the famous arcade game um, other great games like Grand Strokers Dracula from the movie and then you move into now I mean the think of a vintage video game as PlayStation 2 boggles my mind but it is because I'm an old person, because PlayStation 2 came out, what, the early 2000s, yeah, this is 2002, and, you know, it's 2019, it's 17 freaking years ago, it's unreal. Um, and even older than that, the PlayStation 1 games are becoming collectible. They are, especially the RPGs, the role-playing games, they came with multiple discs, I'm still looking for, uh, what game am I looking for? Legend of Dragoon. I want that game. It holds a special place in my heart. One of these days, I will find it. And I could just go on eBay right now and instantly buy it. But there's something about the thrill of the hunt and finding it naturally in the wild at the toy show that just excites me. It excites me. Um, make sure it's still recording. Yep. Uh, Marvel Legends, some of Ben's stuff. Ben's a huge Transformer collector, and he's similar to most toy collectors, where he doesn't do this for a living, but he needs to finance his own toy collecting hobby by mass buying collections or stuff on sale, flipping it, making a couple bucks, and then using that money to you know, go into his hobby. So that's a, it's a good strategy, a good business plan. 
Uh, Popeye, I've never seen that before, that's unique. Uh, more Hot Wheels and Legos, and just random bins. Hey guys, Justice Curry here. I have a very important guest, Pete McCarthy. Hey! <laughs> Now, Pete, oh. we are now sitting at Muskecon in Muskegon, Michigan. Where on the, the map of Michigan is Muskegon? Oh, well, you have to you turn have to, it the other way. Right about here. Right okay. about here. Right you know, I've often, I've often thought, how much more fun would it be if we lived in a state that was shaped like a butt? Yes. You know what I mean? And then I'd say, so, hey, bend over. Right. Hey, where do you live? Point. I'm 45 minutes west of the hole. You know what I mean? <laughs> I so, would like that. Yes. But, so, but we are at Mesquite Con. This yes. is a, a con put, in, put on by Pete McCarthy. Yes. It's a wonderful con. We're going to go through a tour. But I just wanted to sit down with the creator of it and kind of just give me a little history. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, this is going into year three. Okay. Uh, we've been at the Holiday Inn all three years. You know, we've been full all three years. Each, oh, each nice. year attendance keeps going up. It's awesome. This community, um, I get a lot of people say, oh man, this is what Muskegon needed, and that makes me feel great. Right. So yeah. um, the community, like I said, behind this, yeah. they're who makes it happen. Right. Um, right. I facilitated a room, and I got people to come and sell things, but everybody showing up, the vendors participating, the patrons participating, that's truly what makes it successful. Oh, absolutely. And as long as they keep showing up, I will keep, you know, um, and this is your own game. It is. It is. This is all our advantage. friends in this yes. area yep. in southern mid Michigan yep. and everyone flocks to this area and it's not just vintage toys or comics or art it's everything oh yeah yep and I and that was one of the things too when you when you look at kind of what you want to do I wanted enough of a variety to where uh, a justice and his wife and kids can come yep. and guess what you find a vintage toy that you like. Your wife finds some cool crafty earrings that she likes. Yeah. Um, you know, your daughter finds an awesome super girl dress that she likes. You know, little Justin finds a talking truck. I mean, it just, yeah. it's kind of, and that was the whole idea. And we wanted it to be priced to where if you did do that, it's gonna cost you 10 bucks to get in the door, five bucks for you, five bucks for your wife, kids 12 and under free. Um, and you come in, everybody's gonna find something. But if you don't, it was only 10 bucks. Yeah. You know, and it wasn't it wasn't a waste of day. You got out of the house, and you put down the iPads, you got off the PlayStation. And um, and like I said, we have a we have a great time doing it. And one of the coolest things about this is, and, and you've talked about it in your videos, we've talked about it on our podcast, um, we've all become friend collectors. Yeah. And I mean, this is, and, and Travis has talked about different things, this is our homecoming game. This is, every, we need to see everybody, it's a reunion, and it's just, it's we're surrounded by like-minded people, and the people that we didn't know that we do know now, the new people that we friended, um, Jeremy DeWitt, whose booth we're in. I thought you did um, this art. No, I did not do this art. Jeremy yeah. DeWitt, I link just, in the description. Nah. If you want any of this art, I'll give you a link. Not, not necessarily my caliber, but it's nice. Um, but no, so I meet Jeremy at the, at the first Mesquite and I literally have, I hang out with this guy on a regular basis now. We've been on a television show together. Um, we've done shots on stage with his band together. Um, I hug his wife every time I see her. Every time, I, yeah. I totally don't let his uh, angsty 13-year-old daughter like be antisocial. I make her talk to me, and I make her part of the group. You know what I mean? And it's it's been such a fun experience. And and so we meet people like that and you go, oh my gosh, there's this much talent in this again? Well, we knew there was, but there was no place to display it. So we're sitting here in the middle of Artist Alley. It's an entire row of artists. Oh, which I'm going to give you guys a tour in a little bit. Of that. And, and not only artists, but authors and authors that have written books, not only children's books, but adult books. Um, one of our authors uh, has actually built a role-playing game, then wrote a book series based in that universe, then spun the book series out even further. Now it's creating a new role-playing game based in that universe. Oh my gosh. And, and it's, like I said, it's all right here. And How many I, people are coming through the doors and are you keeping we, count? You know, ish. ish. Yep. And, and, and realistically, um, realistically, I... So the, the count side of things is more um, my day job being on the fire department. Uh, it's like if the fire marshal walks in, I want to be able to go, hey, by the way, this is how many people are in the door. Right. So when we do our count, again, kids being free, and, but we count in, we count out. So at any given time, I can tell you how many people are in there right now. Um, but I can, I can say with relative certainty, we have about 1,800 people in the door. Oh, that's phenomenal. Um, year one, we were at about 1,200, so that's a huge improvement. Yep. And when I built this con, it was, you understand what it's like going, okay, this is the money that I make. This is the money that I feed my family, I house. This is your family money. Yep. 
I had to look at it from a standpoint of I don't have ten grand of family money that I can go and what my chance. wife calls lights matches. Right. You know. <laughs> um, and because uh, she's always said that, you know, I, I light my match and it burns really bright and hot, and then it goes out and I forget about it. So. I didn't have that, so I, I built in as many fail safes as I could. And I got to the point of where if I had a hundred people show up, then I was like financially I would break, I would break even and I would be okay. And I wouldn't harm my family money. Well, I'm like, man, running right through my head going, I got a hundred people that are gonna show up just because they don't want me to fail. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know yeah. enough people, there's gonna be a hundred that show up. So I told everybody, man, if I can get five hundred, that's my goal. If I get a thousand, I'm gonna lose my mind and I got twelve hundred. Oh. So it was literally from the time we opened up the doors at 10 o'clock, a little line started before my 10.30 year one, I had a permanent on my face. Nice. All day, it was absolutely awesome. What kind of yeah. events are going to be? Uh, today is the so, setup day, this is Friday, yes, yep. but the actual show is on Saturday. Tomorrow, yep, 10 to 6. Yep. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we're doing a horror makeup demo. Um, a gentleman who actually is just coming off of a, did a music video shoot. Um, and, uh, and and did some makeup in that in that music video. Yep. Um, he's actually a tattoo artist by trade. He's a toy collector. He's like us. He's in dabbles and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. So at uh, at eleven o'clock we're gonna do that. At three o'clock we have a what we've kind of coined as the from our minds to your hands. And it's Matt Rodriguez, Gary Scott Beatty, and uh, Scott Rosema, writers and artists, talking about hey I've got an idea. This is how I got it to the point where somebody could look at it, could read it. And that, I, I, want, I do something like that every year because I really hope that a 12 year old kid rolls through here and he or she goes, I love doing art, I love doing this, this is something that I can do, and it kind of stokes that creativity. Inspires them exactly. to go, wow, there's adults that can use this creative outlet to create comic books, books, what have you, exactly. and then ask questions right. in this panel. Yep, and it's, again, and it's open ended and they just, they fire up, they, they give a little backstory, they fire up questions, and, um, and I, I love that. And then, of course, the cosplay contest at 5 o'clock, uh, a, a child category, a adult category, and then a group category. Oh, wow. So, and that's, that's always a ton of fun. Is that new? Or is that nope, yeah. that's third year. Yeah, we okay. do that every year. Um, the winners of each division, they win a WhiskeyCon gift card. Yeah. Good for any vendor here. Um, but realistically, and I know what you know, um, the kind of the creme de la creme of tomorrow, what I'm, I'm excited about all the panels, of course, but uh, we were able to get our first media guest this year. And when I say media guest, he is obviously a huge media guest to me. And other people may not see that and go, oh, he's a media guest. No, he's not Stephen Amell from, uh, from Arrow. But um, the, uh, the director and creator of the Plastic Crack documentary, which your family was featured very prominently in, um, episode in the very first episode out of the gate and uh, he's gonna be here coming all the way from Miami and he's gonna do a presentation obviously you're included in it and it's gonna be really cool because it's kind of multifaceted it's gonna be an opportunity to learn about what it took to make a con it's gonna be an opportunity to see some kind of some being real stuff some bloopers all Michigan specific um, you know, including you guys and of course some of you that were featured are going to be there as part of the Q&A um, but one of the neat little things for the public is sneak peek at season two he's gonna unveil that here at Mesquite County. And so, for those that don't know, I mean, if you watched any of my prior videos, I'm always talking about Plastic Crack. Right. But if you've never heard of it and you're going, what is Plastic yeah. Crack? It's on Amazon. I'll have a link in my description. It's basically following around different collectors and not just going, ooh, who, got, who has the best and the most? It's about the, the lives and the motivations in the community of collecting. So Guillermo, how do you say his last name? I can never... Olivo is how I've always Olivo, said it. That and he's never better. corrected me. Yeah. So he's, he's either... Nice to Either, yeah, either there's too nice and doesn't care, or I'm right. Yeah, so I think I, you're right. Um, but, you know, I mean, it, it could be Travis saying it, you know, and calling him Oliver or something, which is, you know, Gardner, right, yeah. right, Oliver Gardner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it could be worse, but, uh, so again, I'm super excited about that, and, and not only excited about that, but moving forward, looking to year four, um, I, I, I've already essentially earmarked a big deal guest, and again, I say a big deal, guys. I haven't signed the paperwork. Right, no, not yet. So I can't afford you. I can't afford you. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, but I've already, you know, so this this is creating opportunity moving forward. And 
So Guillermo is one of those guys yeah. that you need him. I was never supposed to be a part of that. That one, you didn't come up to see me, right? So you introduced us, and a couple of you said, well, when you meet this guy, you might want to put him on camera. But next thing you know, I'm on camera, and I'm yeah. interviewing with you. And, right. Um, uh, like I said, it was, it was magic. It was magic. And I, and I looked at it from a standpoint of, I had no skin in that game. So anytime I got to be involved in the final product, that's just really neat. Because no. like I said, I went into it with, I'm not, I'm not a part of this at all. No expectations. So, or whatnot, yeah. But it was because of, again, collectors like you, and, and you were the reason that he oh, came to Michigan. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden we have this friend from Florida who makes this movie. He's like a friend. A, a, a legit a good, friend. A real friend. Like we, we're, we're, we're texting all the time and we're chatting and we're just kind of staying. And it's not just about toy collecting, it's yeah. about just life in general. Life, yeah. And again, has actually become a friend. Like you've become my friend. And yes, we toy collect, we do cons, but we hang out and we pool party and we do all those things. Absolutely. And, um, and again, that's kind of what this whole community is all about. So. Yeah. Pete, we'll be back here tomorrow morning. Awesome. Thank you. Open at 10, right? 10, yep, we open up at 10 o'clock. I'll be here at 10. Okay. Oh, we'll be here about 9.34 awesome. after. Awesome. You guys have a great night. Yeah. See you back. Right. See you tomorrow. I'm going to show you some art. Absolutely. Thanks, Can you sign this? I wouldn't sign <laughs> So, you, uh, and that's actually funny that you say that because Matt Rodriguez from Tulip City, where yep. you've been before, um, and he actually is the writer of Defenders of Eden and Disciple 6. I uh, actually signed art prints of Stevens and was handing them out to people. Absolutely awesome. So, that is so um, funny. But that's another one of those little things that in the toy community that you know the, the fun the fun times that we have. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I just I'm I'm super excited. No, I, I am too. I mean, I love walking around and just seeing all the different types of you know creative artistic stuff, vintage stuff. That the modern stuff and just my friends in general, people right. that I communicate with online and, and then guys that go walk up, oh my gosh, you know, we saw you know, an episode of Podcasters in the Universe or this or my wife's gonna kill me. My wife's gonna kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not sure what podcast you can check it out. No, you can check it out. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks for uh, talking with me and, and uh, check out MesquiteCon. It's 2019 right now. So 2019. Hopefully, if you're watching, then 2035, we expect uh, more mosquito cons going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. We're excited. Cool. Take care, guys. Bye. Big round of applause for everybody. We are just uh, officiating a cosplay there. Ghostbusters 1. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, Cool. I don't have a no. But yeah, let me see the doctor. Lego, how are you, good sir? I'm okay. You got a uh, new shop opened up yet? You had a shop in Kalamazoo. Yeah. Lost toys, right? Yes, yes, Lost yes. And, and your primary uh, biggest is Lego. So your passion is Legos. Yep. Uh, Lego. Oh, okay, yep. These custom mini figures, a lot of them are available in, in sets. So, um, yeah, you can, you can kind of get your hands on these custom figures. They're a lot less than an actual uh, licensed Lego figure, which is nice and well. Edson, you talk about it, any subject matter is featuring a Legos. If you don't like like, do you like Legos? Not really my thing. What? Have you ever stepped on one of these little things? Yes, they are torture. <laughs> they are. They are torture. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I love Legos. They bring me back to a simpler time, warm fuzzy, and then playing with them with my children now uh, is truly special. So going through, oh, he's got a Master of the Universe lunchbox. I did not see this. Nice. G.I. Joe Creo figures. It's kind of like a G.I. Joe Lego. Legos, Creo's another offshoot of Lego. Uh, my favorite, these are the muscle men that I was saying that I was shoving into my mouth for the cover of Plastic Crack. Uh, I got a, not a battle beast, I can't remember the monster. Monsters in my pockets with this little toy line. But, you know, muscle men, near and dear to my heart. That's what my parents were buying me when I was growing up in the early 80s. 
more random bins of spawn or toy biz, what have you. I've already gone through most of this stuff and, and picked out what I, what I wanted. Modern toy lines. Uh, we've got Migos in here. Did you end up picking up any of the Migos? The one that you no. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So most of these are probably NECA's or, let's see, McFarlane uh, did the Stranger Things, which we already talked about. Godzilla is always a popular one. So many variations oh, yeah. of Godzilla. People go goo goo ga. And then video game characters like God of War, Kratos, great character. Um, other horror stuff that gives me nightmares. Just looking at that, I'm going to have a nightmare tonight. Hands down, night terrors, screaming, sweating in my sleep. I can't watch it. it. It freaks me out way, way too much. Do you like the scary movies, Fernando? Absolutely not. What? No. But you're friends with Travis. I know, and I don't go to those movies with him either. What about when he scares you? Does he ever get you good? Um, he gets angry because he can't scare me. He can't scare you? No. You don't scream and go, ah! Not even. Not like Steven? No, like I walked into his house, started petting his dog. He came up behind me and grabbed me. Yeah. I didn't even move. I just no. Got the dog. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love his it. His wife. Oh, yes. We had a Halloween party. Okay. I go into the bathroom. Uh huh. Get ready to unbutton my pants, and his wife jumped out of the shower. What? And I just turned and looked at her. No. Get mad. How long was she waiting there? She said think? she'd been waiting in there for like five minutes. Uh, the she wasted it on me. That's awesome. She'd been better off just standing in the shower listening to me pee. Right. <laughs> Did she get back in or did she leave? She left. Oh, okay. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. All right. We're going to continue this last week around. We're going to the leather craftsmanship. Now, I told you people express their arts in different ways. Now, people will find, you know, different people, wallets and whatnot, and then put engravings of, you know, it's just this thing. Strategic logic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, steampunk things. As you can see back there, a lot of steampunk cast and, and weaponry and, and gadgets and gizmos. So we get to do it all sorts of uh, crowds and customers. I love seeing it. I love people watching it. this one? You ever played Catch Race? No, I think I played Catch Race. I love Catch Race. That is a freaking fun game. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever played Apples to Apples. Yes. 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 Fun yes. Too. I love Apples to Apples. Yes. What's that other one? Climbs Against the Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. We got a Ghostbuster right here. And books. Books, books, books. All over the place. Um, oh, weaponry. Let's talk about this. I love swords and whatnot. I just I grew up liking knights. So these are just some kind of cool custom, real lightweight. You know, you're not going to hurt anybody with this. But for costumes or larking, as the kids say. Uh, kids still say that? Yeah, I think it's older people that do larping. I don't think it's kids. Oh, that's right. And they dress up and they have yeah. battles and whatnot. I think Steve used to do it. Steve does do that. Kind of stuff. Yeah. No judgment. But Steve, this this would be a good weapon for Steve. Just a giant wrench. Of this steampunk looking armband. I like it. I like it. Or ninja stars. Oh yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I could see you buying those. Alright, let's continue. Oh. 
Celebrity alert. I love it. He can hide behind this this Empire State building of a man. This is Motu Joe. Uh, Joe is an awesome He-Man collector. I'll put a link to one of the videos uh, that I did at Joe's house. We shot his collection. It's a mind-blowing collection of He-Man merchandise. Because they merchandise pretty much every single thing. And what? Everything under the sun. From drink masters to... I haven't found toilet paper yet, but I found wrapping paper. I found I found line paper. I found it's everything. Everything on the sun they decided to license me at some point back in the day. Not band yeah. They license not, not, not band-aid, not actually band-aid brand, but adhesive, but adhesive strips. Yes. What about shampoo? Oh yeah. Yep. Shampoo. Everything. Even the slime claw bath, bubble bath, yes. you know, yes. and uh a little die cast metal thing that were probably poisonous, made of lead or something. Of course. Um, the plastic masks, uh, pencil toppers, uh, pencil sharpeners, uh, I mean, it's, uh, pennants. pennants. And we, we talked about uh, Retro Rags Limited earlier when I was showing off the shirts. This is the creator, the founder, the man with the brain behind Retro Rags Limited. So all those really cool inspired uh, Transformers, He-Man, G.I. Joe shirts that you saw previously. Like this one, look at that. Eternal Lion. Look at that, Eternia. Ken that Golden. giant thing. Ken Golden did that. And you have a new There's customer. Vernetta wants the breakfast club. <laughs> Done. That was done by Rocky Scholl. Got another local. Local Western Shop. Yep. Yep. What do we have in the bag? We've got. All right, we're gearing up for our second panel of the day. Nice, nice. We've got a with an actual an artist, oil a writer, Ooh. and an artist and a writer. I don't remember we're what doing slide a question that and answer from. session what on I think what it's like to become an artist or like a writer. Like a little mini, like uh, a little published. Uh, so if you've ever had another, any questions about that, come out and talk to these nice. guys. Another Scott Rosema. And you found that Gary Scott. Yeah, the whole of yeah. 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 But it happens. Is, is that okay? Renata, oh crossing four lines. It's okay with me. Yes, what about other? I wouldn't other? say it too loud around here, though. We might get killed. Yeah. That's dangerous. Yeah. That's you can a... cross the Renata. Fixation with the electric face. I did? No, no. Clay Matthews. I had Thor turned into Clay Matthews. What? No, she can go with me. Yeah, fair enough. Let's continue our tour right over here. So we can see my uh, modern toys, Funko Pops. As you can see, um, Batman. I love, love to see Batman. Me like, too. Uh, can't get enough of that. There's lots of different variations of Harley, Harvey, Harley, whatever. Mario <laughs> Tomato, uh, wrestling figures, Marvel figures. Cream of the Crop is Hardee's. Now, Hardee's is a local store out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, the owner, Gavin Willard, and his wife, Deanna, uh, they have a wonderful booth, as you can see. I mean, they got all sorts of vintage and modern and high-end stuff and, and exclusive this and exclusive that. But they are passionate, good, down-to-earth team. You guys are a team. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's a fact. It is a fact. That they are a team. Uh, so what, how's the show going so far? Going good, man. Yeah? yeah. What are you getting? Uh, more vintage, more modern, or are they having a little bit of everything? Yeah, it's weird, man. I had one guy over here with Funko Pop, and he's counting them. I thought it was maybe like, uh, I gotta count them so many times before I walk away. Yeah. Uh, I'll take these six. Yeah. 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 No! Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Five, six, five, six Funko Pop. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. How much is there? No way. Yeah. So that's how the show goes. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you definitely categorize it. I mean, if you look right here, uh, you're looking at Star Wars, and here's some Hoth uh, troopers and whatnot, or Boba Fett, 
you know, had, he has them organized really, really well. I had those by ear. Oh, that did you? For like, you know, the first 10 minutes of the show. Did you get me or kids? Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, look at this. And then they put it in a long stride. And then they just dump it out. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Anarchy. Um, it's from Con. It's from Con. It's Yeah. Can you tell me what this is again? That is a Planet X Sofubi. I believe it's a designer kind of Decon exclusive. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Sofubi is a Japanese style of vinyl. Well, yeah, okay. But, um, it's kind of a cool piece, you know? It um, catches your eye. It does. It's a weird, weird, strange fashion. Right. But, yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. Because you see a lot of, I mean, in other people's collections and whatnot, you see some of this kind of stuff. Right. But you don't see that in your eyes. Are like, what the heck is that? Right. Especially that. Monster. Oh my gosh. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Nightmare fuel. Right. Exactly. How you doing, Spider-Man? You doing all right? <laughs> what are you looking for? What kind of toys are you looking for? He's into Marvel, Avengers, DC. Oh. He's into everything. Everything. So this is like a playground. It play, is. Isn't this it? is his first con. This is your first con. It is. Oh, you're gonna love. Yeah, this. we've been right. here for about four hours. Yeah. The face paint uh, is better. Open for ah, absolutely. Absolutely. Already I love started it. just and about nine minutes. The families and kids. I brought my daughter and my son several times to various comic cons. I've had Renetta, the babysitter, many times. Um, she charges twenty dollars an hour, but that's all right. It's well worth it. Um, but. Having that next generation come here and have that bond with the parents, it's memories. You can't put a price tag to it. But Vernetta can. She, her price tag is $20 now. Uh, the pops that he was talking about, I joke around with the vinyl prop pops that they're the beanie babies of the modern era. That's not true, but it's funny to say. Um, this kind of caught my eye earlier. I've seen these mini knockoff wrestlers before but I've never seen one carded so that's truly a, a special rare piece right. and as you can tell it's 80 bucks so it is you know rare because not many of them Number survive and we got it really cheaply made uh, probably low production numbers because you know they're manufacturing some of these things in the million you know there might have only been 10 grand or 10,000 of these things made so the amount that survived mints on card is slim to none um, going around I love how Savage World relaunched many of these Motu Motu, Master of the Universe, inspired figures. So you got Nightmare on Elm Street, or Jason, or Michael Myers, or Pin Face. Uh, pin Face or Pinhead? Pinhead. Pinhead, thank you. I, I don't watch horror movies because I'm a wuss, so I'm a little noob when it comes to the names. But I, I personally bought a few of them. I love them. Um, if someone... Pin Face works too. Now, if someone sees something that they're going, oh, I just saw this in the video, can they contact you? How would they contact you? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Tardies.com. Uh, I spell Tardies. T-A-R-D-Y-S. Okay, perfect. And I plan on going there uh, right and doing a tour of their, of their, sh of their shop very soon. And their, their shop is phenomenal. Wonderful comics, wonderful human beings, and toys that we all love. Wait, Gavin, you have an event coming up, correct? We do. Uh, June 8th is our 40th anniversary. What? Yeah, man. We're going to have uh, Eric Powell, the guy who created the Boom in store. We're going to have um, possibly a few more things. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to do a charity auction. Nice. And a bunch of different stuff. So, yeah, definitely come on out. We're going to be putting out all the details on Facebook and Instagram, all, all the normal places that you go on. Right. So yeah, we'll have a link info coming up. Heck yeah, that's great. I'll put a link in the, the description. There's a lot of links in the description, but if you're in Michigan, you gotta you gotta check some of these places out. And if you see something that interests you, freaking contact them. You will be more than welcome to you know make a deal with you online and ship it out and boom boom boom. PayPal. You gotta have PayPal. I don't know much about this. Can you kind of give me the Reader's Digest version of uh, what this is? I'm Mud Brains, MB Custom Toys. I take these blank figures like this, I hand sculpt them and hand paint them into these trays. Oh, 
my goodness. You talk about an expression of art. This is like up a level. Holy moly. Can you hold some up for me? I'm sorry? Can you pick some up for me? Yeah, sure. Here's a uh, Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet being taken over by the Venom symbiotes. Yes. Uh, here's another helmet. Thanos. Oh, oh, oh. Infinity Stones on the back. What's this made out of? Plastic. They're just, you buy, I get these from Walgreens. They're, it's vinyl. Really? It's a do-it-yourself stormtrooper helmet. Okay. And I sculpt all the stuff on it. And oh, my man. And, and I see some of these pop figures. Yep. So you do commissions? Or how do you work? Almost everything I do is commissions? Sure. Almost everything I do is commission work. Even like on that Venom, all that started out just like this. All right, fine. I'll be over there. This so, is all that is sculpted, and then I make each tooth individually to fit each one. So it's all. I own one of his pieces also. What is it up? My son. Yeah. And my grandson. Oh my gosh. I'll show you pictures of them. So people can send you pictures of family members and whatnot. Yes, you can make up cake toppers, family members, anime, movie stars. Let me know what you how can they contact you? Is that how to spell your name on Facebook? That's my name. Uh, look up Fit MB Custom Toys on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, man. You got to be fantastic. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now we made it back to the beginning. It's a, it's a turbulent ride. Um, Fernanda's been yawning this whole time and going like this with her other hand. I caught it. Stop it. Stop talking. But I can't. I have so much energy, passion, to share. This is the home game. This is like all my friends are here. I only have five friends in the world, so this is very special that I can see all five of them together in one place. So hit that subscribe button. Come to Skigon. I don't care if you're up in the UK, or if you're in Canada, or if you're in Brazil. Get your butt. Or if you're in Michigan, Moti Joe or Veneta will let you stay in their house. Fine. Fine. Love y'all. Take care. Hey guys, I've been having a lot of fun walking around. Um, I got invited to be on a podcast. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Awesome. What is your podcast called? It is the Geekly Gab and Nerdical Nonsense Show. Nerdical Nonsense. How'd you come up with that name? Well, we just kind of threw it all together. <laughs> and uh, actually, Brian O'Halloran, mm -hmm. I'm not even supposed to be here today. He said that is the perfect name. Really? He's like, that is the perfect name for a podcast. It is. It is. When you when you came over and told me your podcast name, I'm like, that sounds amazing. Now, what is a podcast for people that might not know what it is? Well, podcast is basically audio. It, it, it is like talk show radio, but yep. it is about any number of subjects you'd like it to be and we happen to focus around movies, comic books, toys, games, anything that is of nerd culture. I love it. Well thanks. Uh, make sure to check out their podcast. How can they find it? You can find it on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google. And Wonderful. All you have to do is type in Geekly Gab and Nerdical Nonsense Show or GGNN231. You heard it folks. Check them out. All right. I'm going to go on live with them right now and you guys take care. Bye. Star.